Well, hello. I am Christopher Basso, Associate Director and Professor of Public Policy here at the School of Public Policy Urban Affairs. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about graduate programs in public policy and urban affairs at Northeastern University. This is me. I'm actually taller in real life. I have been at Northeastern for a number of years, I teach in areas of public policy and, and politics with a, a bit of a focus on environmental policy and food systems and public policy. I also, in my daily life, um, lead the master's programs of public administration and public policy and have broad jurisdiction over the other graduate programs. And I also direct the PhD program, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The agenda for this uh, talk is I'll spend a few minutes about Northeastern University as a whole, about the School of Public Policy Urban Affairs, and then walk you through our various graduate program options, um, talk a little bit about what to look for in a graduate program, and a few frequently asked questions. Um, again, uh, and this is just obviously a short intro. We will encourage you to follow up with us directly. Northeastern University, uh, founded in 1898, is a research one university, which means that its faculty are engaged at the highest levels of research. It has a wide variety of undergraduate majors. Uh, we are a residential, uh, highly selective undergraduate institution. Um, you know, and, and, and as a result, you know, we have uh, a campus setting here in Boston, um, which has, again, a lot of, a lot of undergraduate majors, uh, graduate programs, interdisciplinary programs, and, and a research active faculty. Uh, and that makes a difference in, in selecting graduate programs, because if you're at a research university, your faculty are usually are engaged in cutting edge research on the big questions facing uh, you know, the, the disciplines and the nation and the world as a whole. And that informs the way we do our work here at Northeastern in our gra various graduate programs. Um, Northeastern also has a number of campuses elsewhere in the country and now in the world. And you can work either through um, the Boston campus, you can work remotely, through, fully online for some of our programs, or through some of our graduate campuses such as Seattle, Charlotte, Silicon Valley, and increasingly places like Vancouver, Toronto, and, and even London. Um, but, you know, obviously most of the programs I'm going to talk about today are rooted in our Boston campus and or are available remotely through fully online modality. Uh, the School of Public Policy Urban Affairs, founded in 2006, is, a, is, is like many policy schools, focused on uh, providing uh, research and training in applied policy relevant areas. Um, again, you know, as a research university, the faculty are well versed in the theoretical kinds of research you would find in most disciplines. But as an interdisciplinary policy school, we bring together people from different disciplines to focus on the big questions uh, confronting uh, public life. Um, you know, from climate change to urban uh, design to how do we think about resilient communities to how do we build a sort of better world and, and training students to think in terms of applying their knowledge to everyday challenges in whatever career they're going to uh, uh, go. And so we are a uh, interdisciplinary school. Our programs share a lot of, of courses and students in our programs interact with each other. We have a very strong focus on experiential learning, um, as I'll talk about. We, we think a lot about what are the practical solutions to the problems we face. And we train our students to think in terms of how do we address complex problems, how do we serve our communities, and how do we build a better world, I mean, a more just, sustainable, and resilient world. And that's really what motivates us as a policy school. Um, careers in public policy are diverse. Um, they are not just in, quote, the public sector. They are in a broad array of sectors, including the private sector. Um, obviously, typically, most of our students go into public and nonprofit, nonprofit sector settings. But that will vary by the program and vary by the student. We do have students that who do go into the private sector. But right now, most of our students are going to the public and nonprofit sectors, you know, locally, state, national, and international. And, and, and not just the United States. Uh, many of our international students go home to their home countries and work you know, there in, in those various sectors. Typical entry level positions, as it says here, you know, policy or budget analyst, program developer, program manager, 
you know, evaluator, auditor, assistant planner, assistant director. Again, people at the entry level are going into these positions where they are, you know, in organizational settings or they're doing policy relevant work at that sort of entry level. But obviously with time and experience, you rise up. It's, it's you know, not at all unusual for our students to end up working as city manager or agency heads or they're running a nonprofit organization or they're directing economic development in a city or a town or at the state level. Uh, they're working in state agencies. Um, so again, the trajectories are diverse, the skill sets are transferable, it's not unusual for students to go between the different sectors over the course of their careers, um, and, you know, and, and the pathways are much more fluid and diverse than you might expect. Um, and you can check the kinds of positions that are available out there through this website, publicservicecareers.org, get a sense for what's out there. And we're happy to talk to you about our own student experiences if you want to explore more fully. I also encourage you to check our website um, you know, where we have student experiences listed on there. And again, we are always happy to have you talk to current students, talk to alumni, um, and, and find out information in any way you can. Um, there are a couple of different ways to enter our graduate programs. Uh, the traditional way is you go through a master's program directly. Um, you know, it, for example, if you enter the public administration program directly, um, you could add on a graduate certificate if you wish in nonprofit sector philanthropy and social change, uh, because most of the programs, the programs all have a sufficient number of free electives that you could add on a graduate certificate um, or a concentration. These grad certificates are standalone. You could you could come into Northeastern and just get the, a, a graduate certificate in urban analytics, which will be three courses, all the certificates are three courses. And then if you, decide, and if you decide you want to pursue a master's, you could take your grad certificate, you know, apply for and enter the, say, the master's degree in urban planning and policy, and the grad certificate will apply toward your master's degree. The grad certificate and the master's are both standalone. You can enter the, you know, the, our, our programs through either gateway. Um, they're designed to be complementary and stackable in many respects. Uh, or you can get a master's degree and add a certificate to your master's degree by using your electives. We also have an array of concentrations that are not standalone, uh, such as health policy and management, sustainability and climate policy, um, you know, that, but we don't list those, but those are concentrations available to our master's students. So we have a lot of different way, pathways here to talk about. Let me talk about the, about the different programs. Our, our, our first program is our oldest program, the Masters of Public, Public Administration. It is, you know, as we say, the management degree for people seeking to serve the public good in the public and nonprofit sectors primarily. I mean, we are developing people who are going to lead and manage public and nonprofit sector organizations. And so as a result, we focus on leadership skills, organizational theory skills, understanding budgets, understanding, uh, you know, human, you know, how to work with people, um, you know, and really the understanding, you know, how to be a, an effective leader in the public and nonprofit sector settings. Um, and so the, the kinds of skill sets and competencies you'll work on are really management focused as, you know, as opposed to maybe policy analysis, as I'll talk about the MPP. Although you will take policy analysis um, as a MPA student because you really need to understand those skills as well. Um, you know, although you may not spend your, most of your time doing that kind of work, you need to know enough to be able to manage those kinds of people doing policy analysis. Or you may start out that way uh, and then rise up in the organizational setting. But it really is a, is a think about the MPA as contrast to the MPP, the MPA really is a management degree, whereas the MPP, which we also offer, um, is really more focused on policy analysis, program evaluation, and getting your hands really wrapped around, you know, really policy problems. Um, so it's really focusing on the analysis of data and other information to assess public problems, develop appropriate policy responses, and evaluate program effectiveness. And so this focus here is less on organizational management and leadership and more on policy analysis, program evaluation, data analysis, and other kinds of methodologies and skills that you would need to really dive into a policy setting, understand how this policy area works, um, think about policy design options, recommend solutions to a problem, uh, feel, figure out ways to adopt the solution, and then assess whether or not the solution works. So a typical student here 
is going to go into career settings where you might start out as a policy analyst or, or managing a program um, and really focusing on the sort of nitty gritty, if you will, of, of public policy design and analysis. So the two degrees, the MPA and MPP, are complementary. They sort of feed off each other, but they have very slightly different emphases. Um, and obviously students in both these programs intermix quite a bit because they share a lot of common areas of core courses, but they diverge uh, in, in sort of their core emphases. The Master's in Urban Planning and Policy um, uh, is really a marriage of traditional planning degrees and, and a policy degree. It's really focusing on training pe uh, students to, be, to sort of focus on the big problems of urban uh, areas where most of us will live or are already living, and it's going beyond physical planning and design, which we, we provide that with the School of Architecture and our partnership with the School of Architecture. So we offer those competencies, but we also then focus on research design, statistics, economic analysis, policy, you know, so the big policy questions and, and sort of history and sort of having you think more broadly beyond physical space into broader questions of community. Um, you know, policy design, how to think about the big questions that are affecting urban areas and go and, and sort of think about communities in the broad sense. And, and we also offer four concentrations that reflect our strengths and our focus in urban analytics or big data analytics, if you will, urban sustainability and resilience, where we have a lot of faculty strength, urban design and physical planning that comes mostly from our, our colleagues in the School of Architecture and urban development policy and planning, where we also have faculty in our MPA and MPP programs who provide that kind of of focus. So we, we, we are playing to our faculty strengths in the sort of sustainability, resilience, urban, urban you know, sort of policy, um, and data analytics to provide you with a, a unique sort of blending of the physical space and the sort of community space, and, and if you will. Because the two inter, 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 are inter, you know, interact quite a bit. We also offer in the Masters of Urban Informatics a very specialized degree for a certain group of people who really want to deal with big data, who really want to understand and, and apply big data analytic techniques to the, the problems of cities. Um, in metropolitan areas generally. So it really is taking core competencies in, in, in data analytics, uh, programming and data visualization and big data analysis to the areas of the, the key questions that confront cities, whether it's the mobility of people to mass transit, whether it's how do you, how do you, how do you get uh, how do you respond to sort of citizen uh, you know, needs? How do you think about the big challenges facing cities generally? And it's using data analysis to do that. So it's really training the next generation of experts to use the data analytics techniques, but also informing them of the context within which they're using those data analytics te techniques, the problems and, and challenges facing cities. And again, this is a, 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 a much more techno technologically sophisticated degree in some respects. It's focusing on data analytics, um, but again, within the context of, of urban spaces. We also offer the Master's in International Affairs in, in partnership with our colleagues and other units at the, at the college, um, political science, sociology, international affairs program. And the Master's in International Affairs is, a, again, a professionally oriented program that's preparing uh, students to, for careers in you know, international settings, uh, whether it's the nonprofit sector in the United States, you know, nonprofits that have international you know, sort of facing uh, uh, agendas, or international organizations or international institutions, um, ranging from the United Nations, obviously, to you know, to you know, any other international organizations. Um, and it's really focused on, on that sort of global setting. And then we have two emphases here, globalization, development, and social justice, which reflects our strengths in these areas in, in our college, and international public policy, again, focusing on the policy school's uh, strengths in public policy analysis, and then applying that to international settings. And students in, in this program obviously are looking at careers in international settings, or again, where there's international interfaces. We offer also in collaboration with the Department of Political Science, uh, the MS in Security and Resilience. Uh, and this is a, another a unique program that combines the Northeastern strengths in resilience and sustainability and security uh, uh, planning. 
um, to help students think about the big challenges facing nations and subnational units, whether it's cities or states, um, that on the big challenges that can stabilize societies, um, whether it's the current challenges of the COVID-19 virus or terrorism, organized crime, cyber attacks, and other kinds of, or ranging all the way to the climate crisis. I mean, you know, in terms of how do we think about, you know, resilience and security in, in, in response to the, you know, climate, uh, 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 you know, climate related kinds of disasters. Um, and, you know, so, and the students in this program are going to go into a wide array of security and resilience kinds of positions, whether they're traditional security settings, such as Homeland Security, or as, you know, working for a major city in its, you know, sort of new kinds of resilience thinking kinds of operations. Lots of cities are, are creating uh, um, you know, uh, offices of resilience and sustainability. So the program here is really designed to help you think about how to mitigate, respond to, recover from, and adapt to risk, if you will, to, to safeguard essential functions and societal values. And so the students in this program are taking a broad array of very interdisciplinary kinds of, of, of courses designed to help them think broadly, but also practically to these kinds of challenges. We also offer the PhD in public policy. Now, unlike our master's programs, which can be done part-time uh, or full-time, and they can be done, you know, most of them, a lot of them can be done on campus or online, uh, the PhD is very, is, is, is a more of a traditional kind of PhD program in the sense that it's very, it's full-time on campus only. So you cannot do this part-time, you cannot do it uh, remotely. It's very selective. We only take in three to five students each year, but if you are accepted, you are fully funded for five years of funding and tuition. And we focus on three areas, sustainability and resilience, urban and regional policy, and healthcare policy and management, which again, reflects the strengths of our faculty. Uh, again, given the very specific ways that PhD programs work and the very selective nature of this program and our specific emphases, if you're interested in the PhD, I recommend that you contact me directly. Um, to see whether or not this is the PhD program is the right fit for you. And again, we're only taking a few students a year. So um, we're going to be very selective and, and oftentimes choosing people, not necessarily just because of the academic side of what the, their abilities, but also their fit with what we're doing. So again, I encourage you, if you're interested in the PhD program, to contact me directly. We also, in the school, have research centers that complement our, our programs, the Dukakis Center for Urban Regional Policy, the Boston Area Research Initiative, and our Social Impact Lab. All of these research institutes um, you know, engage in, in the kinds of cutting edge research you would think of at a research university. Our students are interact with these, with these uh, uh, centers. PhD students, obviously, are oftentimes working in these centers as part of their assignments. Master students, we often interact with the faculty in these centers, sometimes you know, collaboratively doing projects, sometimes for money, sometimes not. I mean, master students might be hired on an hourly basis to do research. And so there's all kinds of ways that master students can interact with these research labs. Um, but this is also to, to underscore that we're a research, you know, research university, so our faculty are bringing to the table research emphases and research skills that inform the way that you are trained in our various programs. So what to look for in a graduate program? Um, and I, this is mostly focused on the master's programs. Uh, our, our master's programs here at Northeastern be, uh, are flexible. I mean, one thing we have at Northeastern very traditionally is focused on the adult learner who cannot quit life for two years um, and, and, and quit their job. So, you know, obviously our programs are not cohort programs. They're designed for people who are working or, you know, so our classes are held in the evening. Um, we, you, can, you can go part-time or full-time. Um, and obviously, you know, I should point out, if you want merit aid, you have to go full-time, but full-time is two courses a semester. So it's not a, you know, it's not a huge burden, but obviously if you're working full-time, you can still go to class full-time if you're taking two courses or more a semester. Um, the courses are offered online or hybrid, uh, and in addition to on-campus courses, we have on-campus courses in our Boston campus, we have fully online courses, and we have hybrid courses. Some of our courses we offer hybrid where you come to campus a few times a semester, and the rest of it is done online. Um, you can do the MPA, the MPP, and the Urban Informatics programs fully online if you wish. Um, you know, uh, the other programs, you cannot do them fully online. 
most of the students are working, you know, who are in the Boston area are coming to campus maybe once a week and then doing an on, online course also. So our students are, are mixing and matching. So we have a, a relatively small percentage of students who are doing the programs fully online, the MPA, MPP, and UI programs, but you can. And then we have a small percentage of students who are really doing only on-campus courses. The rest of the students are blending, mixing and matching, depending on their work and life needs. And that's the whole point. We try to be flexible. All of our classes on campus are after five o'clock to enable you to work and then come to campus. Um, we have a strong emphasis on experiential learning. Uh, again, we have a, you know, our, we blend our full-time scholarly faculty who teach the, core, the you know, most of the core courses in research methods and statistics and policy theory and, and other core areas of knowledge. Um, you know, and with, we blend them with our part-time professional faculty who are really experts in their fields because they're doing these things every day. So our budgeting course may be taught by somebody uh, who's, teach, who's actually doing budgeting work in state government, somebody who's in our real estate course is somebody who's actually a real estate developer who is working on affordable housing. So we really are trying to bring people into the classroom who are blending our, our, our full-time scholarly faculty with our professional faculty who have experience right in the field. <clears throat> the majority of your core courses are taught by full-time faculty, and then a number of the electives are taught by the professional faculty. So again, it's this blending of full-time and part-time faculty that's important here to any policy-related uh, program. Students are required to do internships for the most part. Um, you know, obviously, if you're working full-time, we will waive that requirement or figure out ways to enable you to get experience to maybe a research kind of experience. Um, we do offer, you know, there are fellowships available for, you know, not just summer, but the rest of the time, rest of the year. Again, because, because our courses are offered at night, you can do an internship any time of year, not just summer. And we have a lot of hands-on experiences through our classes and through other kinds of activities, such as our capstone projects, uh, that enable students to gain pr really practical experience while they're going through um, you know, their, their course, uh, coursework, um, and bringing their experiences into the classroom. We also offer, uh, and we have our client-based capstone projects, the end of most of our programs where you're working in teams for real clients on real, real sort of consulting uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 projects. Um, that the clients then can use in their own uh, for their own needs. We also offer a, a optional six month cooperative education opportunity for a select number of students who want to spend six months full time in a nonprofit or public sector setting, working for working for an organization, usually paid. We try you know these six month uh, cooperative education opportunities are usually paid. Otherwise, we find that you know it's it's too much of a burden on students. Um, but again, not most students you know don't want to do that. But that's an optional opportunity for a select number of students. Um, and they have, it reflects Northeastern's 100 years of experience in cooperative education. We've been doing this for a long time at our undergraduate level. Now we're doing it at the graduate level as well. So if you're interested, you know, again, talk to us. Um, and we also offer a select study abroad opportunity, for, mostly for urban planning and policy students in Netherlands and Belgium. Um, again, you know, usually it's fall semester only. Um, but again, if for a select number of students, this is an opportunity. I should note that most of our programs you can complete uh, going, if you go full time, you can complete our programs in as few as four semesters, it's, you know, fall, spring, summer, fall. We, you know, summer is a real semester for us, so we don't waste it. And because we recognize that time is also important to you. So, you know, we will guarantee that if you come into our program in September, you'll be able to finish in four semesters by the following December, you know, by December of the second year. Um, you don't need to spend a full two years getting your degree. So again, that's important to people. Or you can spend longer if you're going part-time. Finally, uh, some frequently asked questions. A financial aid comes in the form of tuition discounts, ranging from 20 to usually 33%, maybe a little higher in some rare instances. And these discounts apply to the entire time you're in the program, so long as you maintain academic standing. We do not have research or teaching, teaching assistantships for master students, so you know, that's for PhD students only. Uh, and you're considered for merit uh, uh, scholarships at any time, whenever you apply for the program. It's not a separate process. The application deadlines are listed there. Um, you can enter the program, the master's programs, you can enter in September or January or in May if you wish. Um, most you know, students come in you know, September with a smaller group coming in January. Um, PhD is September only, that's it. Um, so again, there's flexible entry points for the master's programs. Uh, the required materials are, for application are listed here. I will note that with the GRE is not required for master's students, but it is required for PhD. Um, 
if you're an international applicant and you're going to a U.S. university currently, you are not required to take the TOEFL or the IELT or the other language exams. However, or if your international university is a medium of language instruction is English, we need to you know provide that proof. But otherwise, again, the, the, the otherwise the applications are the same for domestic or international students. You know, but again, there's the one difference there is uh, proof of English proficiency. And finally, the tuition uh, currently is at twelve hundred fifty dollars per credit hour. So, for example, if you have a forty credit hour master's in public administration or master's in public policy programs, or forty credit hours, so the you know the program right now would be fifty thousand dollars list price, but obviously with discounts it, it is lower. Um, again, I don't know what the the 2020, 2021 tuition rate will be. It'll probably be slightly larger. Uh, slightly, slightly higher if it changes at all, uh, but so you can get a good idea there. If you just you know sort of check out the website for the number of credit hours for each of the programs, you can sort of do a calculation of what the program would cost out of pocket. Um, but again, remember that's before any kind of discount. Uh, finally, get in touch. Uh, check out our website for uh, and the programs are all listed there with more information. We're on you know various social media, and you can email us at these contact points for the various programs. Uh, please do get in touch if you have questions. Uh, we look forward to interacting with you. There will be future opportunities to interact um, virtually or, we hope, uh, on campus. Um, but don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks a lot for listening, and I hope to you know, hear from you soon.